This video on the physiological monitoring of the surgical patient is the first part of a 15 part series. The first video is going to be only an introduction to give you a broad overview of the topic and sub subsequent videos will deal with each topic in detail. You must have observed not only in the operating room but even the ICU, the ER and sometimes in the wards one needs to be monitoring the patient. You usually monitor the patient to detect any pathological variation in the physiological parameter. Thus this change will provide you an advance warning of any deterioration either of an organ or the organ system. Thus when you detect a change you can take appropriate steps to see that the patient doesn't have any disastrous consequence. But sometimes you ask yourself what is the most appropriate parameter to measure because sometimes an inappropriate therapeutic decision may be taken depending upon an inaccurate physiological data or good data can be misinterpreted and can lead to a worse outcome and it is better not to have any data at all. The various things that could be monitored are the pulse, the blood pressure, the ECG, the saturation, the SpO2, the NIRS, the ABG, etc. And all these parameters which we try to measure are fundamentally trying to see how good or how bad or how compensated is the metabolism. Under normal circumstances, there is plenty of oxygen supply to most of the tissues. And therefore, the aerobic metabolism is determined by the hormonal milieu and even the mechanical workload of the tissues. In pathological situations, there is a less amount of oxygen supply and right now during a pathology the utilization of oxygen is completely dependent upon the delivery of oxygen. So the utilization of oxygen is supply dependent and below a certain critical point of delivery of oxygen also called as DO2 critical increased oxygen extraction will never be able to compensate for the deficit of delivery. Therefore, the oxygen consumption begins to decrease because of various factors. It could be because of poor perfusion, anaerobic metabolism, acidosis and many other things. In the end, as we had seen earlier, there could be oxygen debt wherein when there is a reperfusion and resupply of oxygen, the consumption of oxygen goes way beyond the actual supply of the oxygen. Now these parameters should be understood only after looking at your patient. There is no replacement for clinical acumen. For example, you see a patient who comes to you, he is absolutely stable and his blood pressure, just like mine, could be something like 100 over 60. This is my normal pressure. It could be the same for your patient. And in the likely event that this patient has had some kind of an injury which is very minor, you would actually start thinking in terms of shock. It could also happen that one could start over resuscitating this patient for no reason at all. So remember always, don't simply go by the investigations and their values. Those are only there to support your clinical acumen. Remember that there is no lab value, there is no lab investigation and there is no monitor which is better than your clinical judgment. Thanks for watching the video until the end and let us discuss these topics in subsequent videos. Thanks, like, comment, 
subscribe, email me.